My guest today is Heather Ackles. Heather, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm doing really well. I'm uh, staying safe here in Chicago, and you're in Cincinnati, correct? That's right, Cincinnati. Um, we're actually in Blue Ash, where I had offices. I'm actually in the office today. Uh, I used to work in Blue Ash. I know that place well. Are you? Uh, what do you do at Blue Ash? Um, so I'm the executive director of a local nonprofit called Inter Alliance of Greater Cincinnati, and our whole mission is to expose high school students to the amazing, fascinating world of technology with the hope that we inspire them to be the big technologists of our future. Very cool. That's where it all starts, right? It's That's right. School, and they become the, the technologists of the future. Um, I, 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 know one of the, I know you do a lot of different things, but the one thing that is coming up really soon is the Tech Olympics. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, Tech Olympics is my absolute favorite. And if you ask my high school kids, I'll tell you that about all of my programs. But it is my favorite. It is the nation's largest technology conference for high school students executed by high school students. And what that means is that technically I'm the only employee adult of, uh, of Inter Alliance. And everything else is executed by 30 high school students from around the region who do everything from t-shirt design, procurement, run our website, um, recruit the speakers, everything. But Tech Olympics in and of itself is a true technology conference, as I'm sure you've been to the Microsoft conferences. We have breakouts, we have keynotes, we have competitions, hands-on workshops, um, and it typically lasts three days, and it is in person this year. Thank you, COVID. We are virtual, and we will last the entire month of February. So we're really excited. Different format, different everything, it seems like. Oh, so this is a little bit different, but uh, and hopefully next year we'll get back to normal. Tell, tell yes. me about the normal way. What, how did it work last year and the year before? So typically, it, we um, bring in about 500 students on Friday afternoon. They will spend the evening with us doing exactly what I said, different competitions, breakouts, and keynotes. They then spend the night at the hotel, so it ends up being a, a really fun, non-sleeping experience. We get up and we do it all over again, full day on Saturday, and we do things like Hacker Heaven, um, Wiki Races. We have great presenters from companies like Kroger, P&G, Microsoft, giving us exposure and um, information through cyber and, and uh, software development and other things. But it's three full days, typically, and it's, it is a whirlwind event. Uh, you're talking about um, breakout sessions. You're, this is a uh, almost like a classroom. Kids are sitting in the in the seats. There's somebody in front with slides and a computer and presenting. What what are some of the topics? Uh, so this year we have um, uh, illustrator. So someone's going to go over all of the important part of art design. So as we all know with technology, you can have an amazing idea and a great back end, but if you can't tell your story, then you're not going to be able to get you know funding or buy in or any of those good things. So this year we've got um, someone talking through branding, logo design. We have folks going over the ethics behind data capture. So we have four tracks, um, art tech, software, cyber, and then lastly is um, data and AI. So it's, it's everything. I mean, really, also on top of all of that, we have career preparedness. So we have GitHub training and LinkedIn um, uh training and resume writing and personal branding. Our goal at the end of this is really to prepare those students who are ready for the next part of their career to take the leap. And those students at that freshman, sophomore level to really get a great view of everything this career has to offer. Is that what it mostly is? Uh, freshmen and sophomores that attend? Nope, freshman through senior year. Um, and we have a couple of really exceptional eighth graders that um, if their teacher vouches for them, but typically, um, ninth through twelfth. Okay, and they're all from the Cincinnati area. Is that right? Yeah, our target area is fifty miles around CVG. So we hit just a tiny bit of Indiana, a lot of northern Kentucky, and then you know a, a very large part of southern Ohio. 
Oh, nice. I, they told you off camera that I, I lived 10 years in Northern Kentucky, which is where CVG actually is. It is. <laughs> it is. Our Cincinnati airport, local, you know, located directly in Kentucky. <laughs> of course it is. That's why it's called CVG. It stands for Covington. <laughs> uh, who's doing the keynote this year? Um, so we are still working on finalizing all of our keynotes, but we have a representative from um, Anthem Digital. He's going to be talking about how they're changing healthcare and the customer experience. We have a whole panel of high-powered um, art designers in the game industry. We're talking to folks from Unity. Miami University is setting up that panel. Um, we have uh, Rachel Cochran from FIS, which is a local company here, but they manage the majority of credit card processing in the world. And she's going to go through cybersecurity. And then our last one will be um, from Kroger Digital, Kroger Technology, and talking through the ethics of data and data capture. So multiple keynotes, you're saying? Yes, we have four. So each, uh, each week, um, they'll kick off the theme for the week. Oh, that's uh, so each week. So th this is this year. That's one way this year is different, um, right? It's extended over an entire month, which is not common, correct? Correct. So we didn't want to um, remove the opportunity that we give the students. Typically through that three day weekend, they get about 80 hours of content. So we're taking that 80 plus hours and we're spreading it through the month. I think that everyone through COVID can agree that sitting in front of your computer for three full days sounds terrible. So we wanted to give them <laughs> the same. Wait, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine too, but high school students have had enough of Teams meetings and Zoom and all of those things. So they, we decided to give them a, just a little bit of a, a break. But we're doing some really fun things on top of it. Um, we're, we're having a chess competition. We're having a Minecraft experience where we're hosting a server and the students can come and play mini games. Um, we've got an amazing student graphic designer and 3D modeler whose passion is Minecraft and he's going to help us with creating this nice little Minecraft world for the Inner Alliance students. So it's it's more than just the you know education side of technology, but we're gonna engage them in some gaming and, and some uh, collaboration in that way as well. That, that sounds like fun. You know, I work for the company that makes Minecraft. I know, know <laughs> I know. I actually, in my previous life at Kroger, I came um, out to Redmond and got to tour one of the labs and there was a big setup for Minecraft and uh, I didn't think that I would, if my son was with me, we wouldn't have left. That's where we would have stayed. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, is, uh, is Microsoft involved with this? They are. You know, we're really super lucky that our local um, partner, Chris Carper, invested. Oh, I know Chris. Yeah, he's amazing. He's invested he really is. heavily in Interalliance. He's a big, big proponent for talent, specifically in the Cincinnati region. And he is um, he's given us a lot of support financially through different programs, but they'll be there. We're actually our big prizes each week. Uh, we will be raffling off Microsoft Surface Goes for the students. Um, mm -hmm. We're giving out Xbox gift cards, and a lot of that is in partnership with Chris. We have speakers. Um, Andre and Pete, and then we have um, Cole Conklin and others giving uh, presentations on cloud and cloud architecture. So yeah, Microsoft is a big partner for us, thank goodness. Oh, terrific. It was Andre who introduced us, as a matter of fact. Uh, and now, who's, uh, who's paying for all this? Good question. So we've been really lucky that we have um, amazing sponsors in the, in the region. So like I said, our primary sponsor this year is FIS. Um, our Secondary sponsors are Anthem Digital and Procter & Gamble. Our gold sponsors are Western & Southern, Vora Innovations, and Kroger Technology. I don't think I'm missing anyone. I probably am, and I'm sorry if I am. Um, but those are our biggest sponsors this year. But we also received an amazing grant from the Rotary Foundation, which is a group here in Cincinnati. They gave us $5,000 for student registrations, and that allowed us to offer free registration for 125 students here in the city, which is huge, um, especially with COVID. You know, I think everywhere in the country has had a hard time financially, but that allows um, 125 students to experience that 80 hours of content without worrying about any financial burden. All right. Um, now, where are the costs going this year? Right? For an in-person conference, of course, you've got to provide space, you've got to provide food, but it's different this year, right? It is different. So um, we're investing in the technology. We're investing really heavily in all of those alternate experiences, those games, to make sure that it's um, you know professional and exciting for the students to be a part of it. 
but we're also providing each student with a packet of everything they need to enjoy the conference and engage. So um, GE Aviation is putting together a session for us on lock picking, and every student who signs up for that will actually get a lock picking kit in their in their packet. Nice. Um, so each student will receive over a hundred dollars worth of either swag or those materials. Plus, for example, Illustrator and Photoshop, we're giving licensing for the students for a period of time so that more than just experiencing the workshop, they can then flex their skills after the fact for a period of time. So we're really taking as much of that as we can and we're investing it right back into the hands of the students. Heather, what is your role in all this? So executive director of the organization, um, I get the privilege of leading and mentoring those students. Um, I get to do all of the fundraising in the back end office pieces. But beyond Tech Olympics, we also place about 50 to 75 interns every summer into, oh. pay, yeah, into paid positions. And these are all technology based along, you know, across several of those companies that I just mentioned, Fifth Third and others. And I, I spend a large part of my time getting them prepared with their resumes, getting them professional development training. You'd be surprised how many students don't know the difference between business casual versus business formal versus, you know, t-shirt and jeans don't always mean you should wear t-shirt and jeans, right? So just helping them understand and get prepared for that piece. Um, and then we do summer camps. So I keep, I keep all of Inner Alliance running. We, well, what's we, the, what are the summer camps? Um, in person, they happen at a local university. They spend a week there actually on campus. The mornings we, vis we visit our businesses and they give a tour and talk about the different technologies used within the four walls. In the evenings, we give them training on different pieces of technology, how to make a business plan, professionalism, and then at night, because they don't need to sleep, we have them work in teams to use technology to solve a problem that's impacting our, our community. So be great technologists, but be great technologists who care about the community. So that's what they work on. Virtually, we've uh, last year we had a game design competition and a cybersecurity uh, camp. So it just depends. We're flexing and jiving. COVID's made us very innovative. <laughs> oh, what are the big changes this year beyond the fact that it's um, not gone from three days to a full month? Uh, the weeks are themed. So that's a big difference. Typically, you get kind of a mishmash through the, the full days. Um, the content is a little bit more hands-on. Typically, we offer about um, 10 workshops. This year, we'll have between 20 and 25. And those workshops are where the students actually have hands on a keyboard, which is great. They can actually take a two hour Python class um, and walk away with some real knowledge. And then I would say also um, all of those additional virtual experiences like Minecraft that we're you know, hoping to replace our, our physical student lounge type area with. And are you uh, you're delivering the content over something like Zoom or Teams? Is that right? Yeah, we're using a Whova, we're using a conference platform called Whova, and it integrates with different conferencing tools on the back end, but it allows us to maintain the agenda all in one place, maintain communications and announcements and all in one place. It's really your typical conference app. It's just been up, I would say, upskilled a little to uh, to you be utilized in a virtual capacity. Oh, very cool. Uh, how long has TechLipix been around? This is our... 11th year, I believe. So quite a while. And uh, we, yeah. we started after I moved away. <laughs> you know, I hear that a lot. Um, I think that if I had this opportunity when I was in high school, um, things could have been crazy. You know, it's just so different for for me. I ultimately went into technology, but it's such a great experience for these students. Uh, this is uh, so it's interesting that you went into technology and, and uh, the there's, it's still true that women are underrepresented in technology. In fact, there are a lot of groups that are underrepresented in technology. Do yep. you address that at all in this event? We do. So we are very conscientious about making sure that women in technology and minorities in technology are represented. Um, we partner every October, November, in the fall with another nonprofit for just a women in technology conference for high school students, for high school girls, and that brings about 300 students to the table there. We continue that effort with um, different conversations. Whip Bingo, for example, is always one of my favorite, where we bring women in technology and um, have the students actually go around and try to find out information from all of these amazing leaders. 
to get to know them both professionally and personally to make that connection that these are people who look like them, sound like them, have a similar background and interest. So that's one of our favorite things. Um, we honestly just brought in a new consultant to help us um, not necessarily rebuild, but dust off our diversity and inclusion strategy to make sure that we're evolving the same way that our students are evolving and our companies are evolving. Because we know that having someone at the front of the room who looks and sounds like you as you're sitting in the back of the room makes the world of difference on whether or not a student becomes interested versus inspired. And we want that inspiration. Excellent. Um, and this year, is it still um, limited to Cincinnati area students or does the digital format expand it at all? We've expanded it. You know, we want anyone that is interested to be able to participate. One of the um, really amazing things about the um, virtual format and the generosity of our sponsors is that typically this event is $200 to attend. Just like you said, because of the food and the stay and all of that, we've knocked it down to $40. So it is basically $10 a week, which is highly affordable, but Pro tip, we offer a ton of scholarships, and if anyone wants to, to receive a scholarship, they just have to reach out, and we're very, very generous with those. So um, it's open to anyone. Just know that you're going to get a heavy dose of why Cincinnati is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact of another 10 years. It definitely is. Uh, where uh, where could go, people go to find out information, to register, to ask about scholarships and all that? Um, techolympics.org and we can um, or interalliance.org either way um, just look up Tech Olympics and it'll come directly to us I'm there right now what is this new game <laughs> so our theme this is the first link that I see our theme this year is illuminate so we went with a very neon gaming um, perspective we're, we're working really heavily in art tech and talking about all of the new projection technology for those of you who may not be familiar with Cincinnati, one of the new really amazing things that the city has done is um, what they call Blink. And all around the city, you can see these projection experiences um, that are interactive. So using projection and light technology, you can see our statues move or the murals change. And we're trying to bring some of that technology and some of that into Tech Olympics this year in partnership with Miami. And um, that was part of it, just that really bright, that really interesting type of uh, format, I guess. Oh, yeah, it is bright. I see a little, and there's a little animated uh, Pac-Man to the right and Donkey Kong to the left and something else behind that's obscured, I can't tell. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's a big console type video games. Fun fact, that website, all of the logos, all of the designs and the graphics are created by a junior who goes to Springboro High School. So none of that is, you know, a professional established graphic designer who gets paid for their work. Um, Jude Hoy, Jude is amazing. He does all of our graphic design. Uh, congratulations, Jude. It looks great. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Um, Tech Olympics is amazing. It's it's what drew me here. Uh, my personal experience was that I was I was working at Kroger Technology. I was voluntold when I came back from maternity leave to go do this mentoring session. And uh, eight years later, I run Interalliance. So for me, it's been life changing. For a lot of the students that we've worked with, it's been life changing. So if you get the opportunity, stop in, check it out, reach out, learn more. Um, we're very proud of this event. We're very proud of our alumni. And uh, two fun facts, one over 50 business partners will be there represented virtually through exhibitor booths, so you'll be able to connect with local Cincinnati companies. And number two, those internships that I mentioned, the job descriptions drop exclusively to our Tech Olympics associates, our Tech Olympics students, um, before the rest of the world. So they will get exclusive access to those partners and those job descriptions to be able to make some of those connections. Very cool. Have you ever had an alumnus um, come back after high school and participate in Tech Olympics? Yeah, we actually have about four of our sessions this year are being led by um, individuals who went through Interalliance. Um, one is talking about how Interalliance and really helped them jumpstart their career and their intern programs. And then I have a student, Radu, who goes to Duke. He graduated, I'm going to say three years ago. Um, he is giving an entire session on um, AI and how to interface directly with the computer and start training your computer. So we've got some pretty amazing, 
pretty amazing stuff. We have a, a alumni teaching GitHub, it's the advanced GitHub class for us as well. So we're, we're very fortunate that our alumni invest in us in that way as well. Excellent. Well, Heather, thank you so much for your time. It sounds really exciting. Thank you. Uh, you thank you for safe. having us. We're, we're really excited. Yeah, thanks. You too. Come to Tech Olympics, engage with Inter Alliance, because that's where you can learn technology and gain more friends.